So one thing I think about a lot is the psychology of the audience. What is the audience thinking about, uh, especially when it comes to your, um, you know, whatever it is, whatever your venture is. Like if, if we're talking about, you know, you just putting yourself out as a personality on social media or if um, you're advertising a business or a product, service, whatever the case may be. I always think about what is the psychology of the audience that is consuming um, whatever it is you're putting out because different people think differently in different moments. All right. <laughs> different people di think differently in different moments, right? So if you are... Because the reason why I just thought about this is I just saw a billboard from you know someone local who's you know trying to promote their uh, their new nail business well, I'm, I'm assuming it's new I'm, I'm not sure I couldn't really tell but uh, they're promoting their uh, their their nail salon business right which is good you know what I mean like I'm like I, I believe this is a new billboard I haven't seen it before um, but which is good because you know we're, we're just about to come out of quarantine more than likely, and, um, you know, you want to be, you want to be top of mind, um, when it's time for, you know, your, your customers to, um, when it's time for your customers to, you know, to start thinking about where they want to go to get their nails done once we are out of quarantine, um, here's the thing, and, Billboards can be effective somewhat, but, you know, I mean, if you listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, then, you know, I pretty much agree with him about billboards, right? Well, at least I, my way of thinking comes from Gary Vaynerchuk, right? But anyway, so, um, the psychology of someone who is looking at a billboard. Now, me, when I see a billboard, you know... I'm, I'm very interested in marketing and advertisement, so, like, I'm looking at a billboard to see how effective it is, like, is it catching my attention, does it make me think about that product or service, like, I just, there's a Blue Moon uh, billboard on the side of a building over here to my, uh, right, yeah, um, simple, just keep, you know what I mean, like, just meant to put that product, that brand top of mind, right? Um, but what is the, like I said, what is the psychology of someone looking at a billboard? Um, you know, honestly, of course, like I said, if you met, I mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk. If you listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, he'll tell you, you know, people ain't even looking at billboards. Uh, I do. But, you know, what is the psychology of somebody that sees a billboard, right? They're just passing by. I'm just passing by your billboard, you know, so it might catch my attention, you know, if I'm not occupied with other things, it might catch my attention, but what action am I, action am I going to take from seeing that billboard? See, billboards really should be just to put your brand top of mind after they've already known about it, right? So, like I said, for instance, Blue Moon. I don't expect that billboard to make me want to try Blue Moon. But for somebody who does drink Blue Moon and wasn't thinking about Blue Moon at the time, right? They might see that and say, you know what, once I get off work, I gotta go to the store and get me some Blue Moon because I haven't had that in a while or I'm, I'm running low at home, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that is the psychology of a billboard. So, if you're running, if you if you have billboard campaigns set up for a nail salon or a service or something like that, right? That's gotta be a branding tactic, right? Branding is putting your product or service top of mind, right? Not just letting people know that you're available for whatever service. Um, because the thing is, is like, 
it's not that off. It's very possible. Like you very, you very well could have somebody pass by, see that billboard, and say, "Damn, I do need my nails done." Right? Um, I've been looking for a new beauty. I, I've been looking for a new salon. Something. You know, my uh, my nail girl been tripping or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very possible. But it's highly unlikely um, because who's to say, you know, like who's to say that that person is even going to pass by that billboard? But just in case they do, you know what I mean? How high are your chances of finding somebody who's thinking, "Damn, yeah, I do need my nails done." What's the phone number on there? That's if they are stopped to see it like nobody's nobody's going to turn around to find fix like catch what they missed on a bill nobody trust me um but like i said if they're just passing by you are much more likely to use billboards as a branding tool if you have a recognizable logo recognizable phrase even if you're just trying to put one simple message out there like if you have a brand that's already well known and you're just trying to put one simple message out there open 24 hours um, ten dollar nails right something very very simple like that because if people are passing by I'm just glancing at the billboard right I'm not just, I'm not about to sit there and study the billboard even if I'm at a red light. I'm not about to sit there and study the billboard. I'm just passing by. So I think Planet Fitness did that really well. They have billboards up with just one simple message. Excuse me. It's purple, so it's on brand. You know the Planet Fitness logo and it's just one simple message. Open 24 hours, right? Um they know the psychology of their audience. Now, going back to social media, right? Um, what is the psychology of somebody on TikTok? You know, this is a huge, huge shift in perspective we went from billboards to TikTok. But, um, you know, I mean, somebody on TikTok. They're probably trying to escape the day, trying to escape their kids, especially right now. Um, TikTok is mostly, you know, a lot of, uh, not single women, but a lot of uh, stay-at-home moms. There's a lot of stay-at-home moms on TikTok. Um, like, that's the, usually the psychology of somebody on TikTok is somebody that wants to be entertained. Um, you got this, you got certain people that want to they just want to grow, right? Which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. But some of their actions kind of shows that they just want to grow. They don't want to entertain. They don't want to provide value. They don't want to put out good content. They just want to grow their audience, right? The, a lot of those people that, let's all small creators, we need to help each other out, right? Um, that's why I had to put some of my videos on private because... I was attracting an audience with the psychology of, I just want to grow. So they would leave all kind of spammy ass comments. Um, and some of them would only follow me because they want to, they expect me to follow them back. Right. Um, so the message that you put out there also has to really think about the psychology of the end user audience you know what I mean so the, the video that I had put had to put on private was where I was talking about how um, I always show love to the small creators um, but I always skip you know the, the celebrity pages and stuff like that right I had to put that video on private because and at first that video got me a lot of followers a lot of views um, back in January when I first posted it right went dormant then the algorithm picked it back up. Now that we got all of these, you know, these quarantine creators, I call them, um, 
you know what I mean? Like a lot of them are just trying to grow, right? And a lot of them, <clears throat> a lot of them are, you know, some of the the, the the more spammy type of people from like Instagram and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they don't really respect how TikTok works um, or how we use TikTok, right? Uh, but yeah, so like I said, the message... So the medium matters when it comes to psych, the psychology of the end user and also the message matters a lot. So how can you um, incorporate the psychology of the end user into your marketing? It's something to think about before you start putting out marketing dollars. Um, something I need to think about as well, you know what I mean? There's a lot of things that I've been wanting to do or been close to doing without thinking about, okay, what is the mentality of the end user? Uh, so if you are, say for instance, if you have a nail salon or any kind of beauty salon, period, right? Um, honestly, if you are any type of business, right? It is, to me, I think it's beneficial for you to invest some dollars into finding out what the mentality is of your end consumer, right? Because if you don't find that out, you can waste a lot of marketing dollars, like putting up billboards that you expect people to book you from. It could work. It could work. It's not impossible. But it's not that, that probable. Right, um, but if you don't take time to find, out, and I don't want to put, I don't want to say like they didn't, because maybe they did. Maybe they did realize like, okay, our audience, the people that we want to attract, they look at a lot of billboards. You know, maybe they did do that homework. I don't know, um, but it's worth investing. It's worth investing some dollars into finding out, you know, what is your audience thinking? Uh, what do they pay attention to? What do they care about? Uh, what kind of experience would they like to have uh, when they get their nails done, right? Um, what messages resonate with them? Like, you know, you know, what are they, what do they care about? What are they lacking in their life? You know what I mean? Like, what what, uh, what human need are they trying to fulfill when they are going to get their nails done, when they're going to get their hair done, their hair cut, you know what I mean? Um, when I'm going to get my hair cut, I'm like, I'm honestly, I don't I only get my hair cut. I can't blame it on the quarantine. I can't, I really can't, because I always, I never really even get my hair cut until one, I'm tired of looking like a wolf, two, um, there's some kind of event coming up or something like that, something that I need to uh, have a haircut for. So usually those are the only times I actually get a haircut. <laughs> Other than that, I don't, I'm not really consistent with it. But, but if a barbershop, if a barber, individual barber or barbershop, whatever the case may be, if they were putting out messages like that, like, you know, tired of looking like a wolf, uh, got an event coming up you know what I'm saying like uh, come to this barber shop you know we we provide this this and that you know what I mean feel like a you know new man again whatever the case whatever the message is that you are trying to put out whatever the feeling is that you want your customers to leave with you know what I mean put that message out there um, instead of just saying yeah this is such and such barber shop on such and such street you know um $15 haircuts what, you know what I mean and that's it you know what I mean like have some kind of some kind of message that people can uh, resonate with because marketing is and is going to get even more personal the more I feel like you are talking directly to me the more likely I am to come in consume your product or work with your business or 
book your services, whatever the case may be. So think about the psychology of that.